another true game changer that is the biggest box office success of all time. Yes, we are going back to Pandora on December 16th with Avatar, The Way of Water from multiple Oscar winner James Cameron. Now, we are going to please, we are going to welcome some of the key creatives on this. Please welcome costume designer Deborah Scott. Cinematographer Russell Carpenter. Production designer Mr. Dylan Cole. And joining us virtually, Mr. James Cameron. <laughs> Hello. I was saying to, to Russell, it looks so beautiful, doesn't it? Just looks so beautiful. To be completely honest with you guys, like Avatar is my thing, okay? Like it's my thing. I love that movie, and this movie looks amazing. James, one of the first things we want to talk about is give us a sense of the journey that got us to the weight of water. Because it's been a, been a bit, been a spell, but obviously from what we've just seen, it's, it looks like the payoff is there. Yeah, I, I was digging around for about three years doing deep ocean exploration and, and uh, indigenous rights stuff and sustainability stuff. And I got serious with the writers in 2013. And there was a period of writing process of a few years. And then we got into design. And that's obviously, uh, you know, Dylan's and, and Deb's area. And, I, you know, I want them to t get a chance to talk about that. But, uh, you know, we, we, we go deep when we design, you know, worlds and cultures. We had the whole, uh, you know, technology and architecture and so on for the human world. And then we have the not V world, different cultures there and, uh, and everything that they wear, you know, all their, their jewelry, their architecture, so to speak, which is really a way of symbiotically kind of merging with the, the natural uh, trees and the world around them. Um, and that all takes time. And the writing process took time. So we started production in September of 17 uh, with the goal of making all of movie two, all of movie three, and the first act of movie four, which we, which we did. And then for the last uh, year and a half, I've been on uh, just post-production for movie two, which is coming at you like a freight train. Now, I want, you mentioned it, and I want to talk about it both to Dylan and Deb. I hope you don't mind, Russell. We will get back to you. Uh, Dylan, production design on this movie, let's just call it interplanetary. There was more than one production designer, in a sense. Give us a sense how that worked with you and Ben. Yeah, for sure. I was fortunate to be co-designer with Ben Proctor, and probably the simplest way to explain it is I designed all things Pandora, and Ben was all things Earth, which is a perfect division because, you know, you, 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 know, you have a giant culture clash. And, 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 and production design is also very different on these films um, because it's not just, oh, we're, we're making a set. You know, it's like we are dealing with, uh, with motion, you know, with, with, the, with the village Jim was talking about, with the, with the connectivity and, and, and how the set moves. And also instead of, oh, it's just underwater coral, it's like, no, you're set dressing with fish. You know, it's, it's like, you know, creatures are part of the set design too. And so it's, 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 it's a very broad term for sure on these films. Now, Deborah, part of... Look, I'm just going to tell you guys now, you saw what you saw. You got to give props to Deborah Scott here because <laughs> this nice work, costume design is a hard job, clearly. Costume design in two realities simultaneously, is that fair to say? Yeah. Deborah, give us a sense of how this happened because you just didn't make some costumes. Oh, no, this went, this went further than that. We, we were actually so lucky that Jim, who, you know, led us to believe that we needed to make all of the virtual costumes. So all of the Navi, all of the things that will never live in actual physical space with us, but they live in the virtual world. But the fun thing was, is like, it's just like designing any movie. And we went through an exhaustive research process. I was really fortunate to be able to also, with a lot of these characters, you know, design the hair, which was really a fun thing because it, it just makes the whole body work together better. Um, and yeah, I had to jump back and forth into the, the real world. And that was, that was almost as hard, but not quite as hard, but definitely not as fun because the Navi stuff is like just going into that world and learning all those techniques and having an amazing, talented team that could weave and knot and macrame and stitch and, you know, just crazy, crazy, crazy talent, really. For, for you as a costume designer to work with making all the costumes in the real world and then also using CGI. What for you was the biggest challenge that you didn't expect? The biggest challenge, I think, as Jim knows, I wasn't really that prepared to work in virtual reality. It was really my first jumping off. So I had a lot of catching up to do and a lot of, uh, a lot of education. 
but it was very, the whole process was so, so deeply thought out by, by Jim and John, our producer, that it was, it was really easy in a way, because you could go to a million experts, these people that worked down at Weta Digital, and, you know, just incredible brains that you'd go, uh, I don't understand that, and, you know, just clear it up right away. But the fun thing was, is like, once you got through this kind of real part of the movie, and then it was sort of shepherd, shepherding it through this virtual world with the digital people, which was, was kind of like, they were the, the, the fitters, right? Mm -hmm. They were the ones capturing what I did. So instead of doing a real fitting with a nine foot tall blue person, you could do, you would do a virtual fitting. So you'd be looking at it on the screen and saying, make it a little longer, shorter, you know, so it was pretty fun that way. It's a little disconnected from the actors. It's not the same, same way, you know, that was all up front. And then, but after that, yeah. So they were just real people to me. Jim, you talked about it uh, when we, you first joined us on camera about the years you spent. I'm not going to paraphrase it, but, you know, a little busy doing some underwater uh, documentary work and other stuff like that and native rights and climate change. One of the elements about this that I feel very different, and I now say this as a father of a young child, this is about family. This is about, this is about the sense of the next generation, the sense of what you pass on. I wanted to get a sense from you, and in that story, we've talked about the amazing technology, but in that story, why was that important to you at this point for the sequel? Well, it's important to me personally, and it's always best, I think, to write personally and write viscerally uh, about you know things you understand from your, your own life's experience, especially when you're setting your frame in such a fantastic world uh, you know, a world of the imagination, you have to ground it, and you have to ground it in two, true universal human experience, right? So I thought, you know, the first movie was a relatively simpler story, uh, Boy Meets Girl, The Star-Crossed Lovers, you know, almost a Romeo and Juliet story where they're from the opposite houses that are at war and so on. We all recognize that story, but we also all recognize family stories. We're all I think most people either are, are part of a family, they, they've lived with their parents, they know their parents, they, they have siblings, many people, um, or they long for that because they didn't have it. Maybe they're an orphan or maybe they were you know, only, only child or maybe their parents split up or whatever. But we, we all either know the family experience or we long for the family experience. And it's just in our, in our genes, right, in our code. Um, and as a father of five, I had plenty of experience with the, with the teen angst, you know, in the teenage years, the anxiety of that, you know, both, both you know, in my own direct experience as a, as a teen many moons ago, back when I used to ride my Stegosaurus to school, uh, you know, but with my own kids. And hey, they really, uh, so, ri they really know, ride those to school in Canada. Don't laugh. They really yeah, ride those to school in Canada. The mastodons do better, you know, because of the cold. But anyway, so the, so you know, my 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 own kids, and they know, they laughingly know that that they're kind of in there, sort of, kind of, through a fun, fun house mirror. Uh, but the conflicts, the the you know, the dysfunction, but also the love and that strong bond that's greater than yourself. All of those things. What what are Jake and Natiri like as parents? They can't just go leaping off a cliff. They can't do. They can't do the things they used to do, or, or can they? And what happens when their sons want to be warriors as well? Do they hold them back? They're still in that conflict, that elemental conflict with the, with the humans. So this was all great grist for the, for the dramatic mill. Uh, the film is, I would say, more emotional, more detailed around the characters, more emotional, more of an emotional journey. It still delivers on the, on the beauty and the the wonder and the spectacle and all that, as one would expect, and as kind of we've been, been selling it. But it's not just a week in Bora Bora. It's, it's a, a very heart-wrenching journey and by, by design. And we want to, want to get these characters embedded in, in, in you know, the audience's consciousness so they care about them. So they want to see more of that journey going, going forward. You know, That's Ru the theory, anyway. Russell, I mean... So, Russell, you've made a couple of movies with Jim over the years. A little movie about a boat that hit an iceberg. Some people heard about it back in the day. If you haven't, Google it. You'll know what I mean. Um, but this in particular here, I want to get a sense of, you know, one of the things is you guys really filmed underwater. Water's a thing here, clearly. You know, as a DOP, you know, a lot of people would just go for the tech. They wouldn't go for the, for the water. 
give us a sense of what were some of the challenges that you faced in filming this actually underwater? Well, well, the first challenge that Jim gave me, he said, what I want you to do is basically just disappear. And what he meant by that was your work has to be so seamless that nobody even knows you were there. And I think that that's kind of, kind of a statement you can make about everybody's work on this. Because when I saw the film, it, all this technology, all these years, all this computer work, it just disappeared. And, it, and you were just left with the motion. And I thought, wow, that, that's where we're cooking. So I became part of that, and it was a huge tapestry. And uh, we were we 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 did our work in a number, a huge number of very vast stages, underwater stages, and everyone had just had a different challenge. And so uh, I got together with my team, and we we worked on that, and uh, kept working on it, worked on it till the last day we were there. And um, I, I'm really glad I was part of that. Well, it looks amazing. Could I just interject something there? You're James Cameron. You can interject anytime you like. You're good. <laughs> well, Russ is, Russ is a very humble guy, and I don't think he takes enough credit for what he did on this film. Uh, Russ was not only over the actual live-action photography, but he was also involved with me for a year ahead of time doing, the, doing the, the virtual cinematography as well and setting the look for every single scene in the movie, even if ultimately some of those scenes were executed via CG. Russ lit them in advance, and I wanted, I, I, I encouraged that, and it was something I'd always wanted, which is to have a world-class DP in with me in the, in the virtual lighting, as well as on the set, you know, so Russ was asked, asked to and, and succeeded beautifully in evolving to the kind of next level of cinematography, in my mind. Well, guys, in my mind, I'd like to say thank you so much, Deborah Scott, Dylan Cole, Russell Carpenter, and Mr. James Cameron. Avatar The Way of Water opens next month. See you guys. Thank you guys.